Hello, so welcome to the University of Brighton and its MSc and PG DIP social work qualifications. My name is Ian Dorr and I am the course leader, the current course leader for those programmes. I've worked at the university for a few years now and teach across the MSc and PG DIP programme but also the undergraduate um, course as well. I also run the module that trains practice educators who you'll get to see um, if you join us when you're out on your placement, um, he'll be your, your, your assessor leads out there um, during that time. So I do a, yeah, a mix of different things from the, from the qualifying to the, the CPD um, routes. Um, and before joining the university, I worked for Brighton Home City Council. I was in their children and families team, predominantly in the, in the duty team, as it was called then. So the initial point of referral, if there were concerns or worries about a child, so um, it was a it was a short term team that would go out and do the initial assessment work, the initial child protection um, conference work, and child protection plans set up that kind of stuff. So um, that's my area that I'll, that I'll talk about, and maybe reference, um, certainly in teaching, but but maybe uh, as we go through this presentation as well. So why social work? Now this is probably not a small question. Um, and it may have many different answers and a much personal connection for you. Frequently um, and more commonly, we see students joining social work um, because of uh, a key interest that stems from perhaps disadvantage they've experienced themselves, perhaps a family member or themselves personally have been involved with social work or social care services or a really strong connection to supporting others, enabling others, that kind of stuff, making a career change maybe from teaching into social work um, or, or, or a, a career change of another kind. So that's an important question and your motivation is crucial. Um, it's, uh, it's a crucial asset really um, to have and to bring with you and, and enhance and work with during your time on the course. With that motivation that you bring with you, you'll be ready for some of the challenges this demanding career poses. Um, you have heard stories that social workers are, are, are juggling lots of different casework, um, working with high risk situations, working with lots of uncertainty, and all of those add, you know, can add pressure um, to us. But you'll also have heard and seen examples, hopefully, of social work as a rewarding um, career. And while sometimes it may feel like a bit of an uphill challenge to support and help body somebody as you want to, um, those small steps of enabling, facilitating, being alongside them, helping them in some way, those little incremental steps towards positive change can be very re rewarding. And that's what we kind of need to hang on to as practitioners isn't it and that's why many of us um, retain our connection with practice so whether it's through social work education or frontline field work you know that retaining that because of the rewarding nature of the profession um, is so crucial really when you qualify um, from the program you'll be able to apply for social work jobs obviously and register with social work england the current regulator of the profession and um, once you're registered, you'll be able to um, call yourself a social worker, which is a legally protected title. Um, and predominantly, our, our students work in a, in a local authority setting, whether it's adult services, children's services or, or some mental health teams, which may actually be in some mental health trusts, um, NHS trusts. Um, but they also work across a whole, whole gambit, a whole range of third sector organisations. So. Uh, very recently, um, uh, one of the MSE students qualified and got a job with an organisation um, that we work closely with called Turning Tides, um, who mainly um, work to support people who experience homelessness. Um, other social workers working in, in, in different organisations like the YMCA, for example, um, some Mungos and, and you know, many others. So social work doesn't happen in just one area or one arena. You'll, you'll see there are a number of opportunities open to you when you qualify. What we 
will offer you on the course is, is an experience, is a taster of some of those areas. So you'll do two distinct social work placements um, during your time with us. You'll be quick, equipped with the foundational knowledge. Um, we'll be working with you to develop and enhance your skills base. So there'll be a combination of academic learning with professional skills, um, experiential um, development and growth as well. Why Brighton? Now that may also be a very big question, but um, what is important and, and really uh, one of our strengths is that all our teaching staff are social work qualified and still registered social workers. Not every institution can say that. So when you're with us, you'll benefit from our practice experience, but also our teaching knowledge and our research expertise and our research interests. So you'll also um, uh, get to see um, other um, like-minded students, really, because you'll be based within a school that houses psychology, sociology and counselling. And those are subjects that really inform the knowledge base for social work. So we're really lucky to have those close by us. Also close by us, are other vocational um, uh, professions that, that train at the Falmer campus. So we have um, trainee teachers are based here, for instance, and um, some medical students and those from the health professions are also uh, based here. And you'll get to see other, other students from, from different courses. And, uh, at the start of the year, um, the uh, MSc cohort with the final year cohort of the undergraduate course as well were working with um, occupational therapy students for example and so we set up a virtual for forum a virtual workspace where they could work together in, in, in small groups and then come together as a whole group and um, to think about roles and responsibilities approaches to case work and um, work on some case studies together give some group feedback that kind of stuff where possible, we'll get you in the, in the same space, whether it's a large lecture theatre or, or small breakout rooms on campus um, to meet members, uh, yeah, other members of the student body uh, as well. So there's, there'll be a diversity, a, a sense of diversity um, that you'll be exposed to. It won't just be um, other social work students. Um, and for those of you, whether you're an international student or a national student um, applying from, from wherever you're, you're living at the moment, um, and you may not know Brighton that well, but suffice to say, Brighton's a very open and diverse and tolerant city in the UK. It's not far from London, uh, not far from Gatwick Airport, and it's also bordered by a very pretty national park. So it's got many selling park points, um, not, you know, not just the university itself or just what we do at Falmer where with our social work students. Um, it's also important for me to, to, to introduce you to some of our partners that we're working with. It's not just us that deliver the course. We work very closely with people with lived experience of social work services, so service users um, and carers. We also, um, uh, or part of that close working uh, involves um, them helping us interview you. So you may get to meet a service user today. Um, you may get to meet a service user in a teaching session, which may they may run on their own without any of us there, or maybe co-facilitated between one of us and one of them. And they will certainly play a role in your assessment at some point as well. Usually that takes place um, um, or um, at the end of uh, your qualification when they look at the final year portfolios with us to get a nice different perspective of somebody who's been through um, some of the stuff that you'll be working with, some of the difficulties, struggles um, that you'll be working with on your placements. So that's a really important, another really important thing to, to mention. We also work closely with local authorities and third sector organisations to provide you with those two placement experiences. Um, the, the shorter placement will probably be in a third sector organisation and, and the longer one will probably be in a local authority setting. So you'll be travelling to those placements. Um, don't know, you might you might have a, have a placement which is a short travelling distance or one a bit longer, but there's a, a nice mix from working with children, working with children and families, working with young people, adults, older people, those with suffering mental, from mental ill health, learning difficulty, disability, um, a, a, a real um, a, a, 
yeah, a, it's a real opportunity to see what social practice, social work practice is like to learn from other professionals um, within those different placement settings. Um, you'll also get to see um, practitioners um, during your time here who help deliver teaching sessions. So again, that might be co-taught or it might be solely practitioner led. So that helps to expose you to, so if, you know, if your placement, for example, is in a children's services team, you'll get to see practitioners from adult services coming in to talk about what practice is like there now, to talk about the skill set that you need to work in that area, because it's a very much generic qualification. And it needs to be a generic qualification to enable you to get employment in, in whichever area you want to, really, um, which is, yeah, which is worth worth bearing in mind. It's not a it's not a one track course. It it does, as I said, give you that foundational knowledge skill set to work in any area of social work. Um, and lastly, I want to highlight the fact that each year um, we are, are working with student reps, so. You'll be um, assigned a tutor group, a professional tutor, an academic tutor, uh, when you join us, uh, and that person will look at your development throughout the programme, but also be there to help with any pastoral support that you may need. Um, and within your tutor group, we seek a volunteer um, to act as a student rep to be that conduit between us and the student body, um, so we can build on and work together in terms of feedback, adapting the course, responding to the student queries, that kind of thing. So, yeah, there's a lot of people involved, a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different experiences, outlooks, and that really adds, adds the richness of the learning environment and, and what we can offer. So our approach, yeah, it's one of, uh, of collaboration, really, um, uh, and uh, it links with this idea of a relationship-based practice uh, upon which the course is based, together with critical thinking and systems approaches. It's not just one isolated, you know, not just isolated elements. Um, I like to think of us as an approachable um, staff team and certainly our practice experience, I think, helps us in the way that we work with students and unpick knotty issues, unpick difficulties, for instance, or can guide students to see things in different ways, to think in new ways, in fact, um, which is, a, which is a, a seminal part of the learning process, um, certainly for social work, um, in my view. Um, so I've, yeah, in, you, you'll hear the term community of practice in some of the literature, um, particularly around social work education. So I see it as embodying a shared learning process where, where you're learning from us, but we're also learning from you as well. And that's really important to bear in mind. You bring with you a lot of lived experience, whatever that may be, um, and new, fresh perspectives. And social work's all about being open, accepting, inclusivity, that kind of stuff. So it's really important to remember that we're, we're working together. So part of that working together embodies the a value um, base as well. And one of the key things that we'll talk about, as, as many social work course would, I, I guess, is social justice. Um, and you'll see that weaving through our work and our, our, our peering in our, in our lectures. Um, Support along the way, additional support if you need it, is available from our student services team who can help with a, with a range of stuff from study skills to um, if you have additional learning needs, they can put you in contact with the disability and dyslexia team, but also in terms of money worries or accommodation issues as well. So we've got a, a really um, uh, comprehensive package of student support in our via our, delivered via our student centres and we've got one at the Falmer campus too. So looking forward to the, the, the course going into um, uh, or maybe post application when you get your offer and you've decided, yes, Brighton feels right, Brighton feels like the place to be for me to do my studies. You've got to think carefully about funding because we only get a limited number of bursaries allocated to us, as every university does across the UK. Most students get a bursary, but some some won't because there aren't enough spaces, unfortunately. So if you're doing the MSc option, you might want to look at a master's loan. Um, so keep an eye out on the um, NHS Social Work Bursaries website and the government's website in terms of those sources of finance uh, to see if you're eligible as well for those. Um, there will be private providers offering career development loans and stuff as well, so, so, so check those out. Most people, I say most people get a bursary, but, but some you usually don't because of the, the demand. Um, also look at the practice capabilities framework. You'll be assessed against that from 
this point in your interview, going through your placements and into your assessed and supported year, your first year in employment, uh, and indeed beyond. So professional social workers um, are assessed against that framework as well throughout their career. So check out that. It's like a rainbow with nine different domains that your, um, that your um, practice capabilities are, 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 are looked at against. Um, also look at Social Work England, the regulator's website and the professional standards. And also, which you've probably seen already, the, the, the recruitment page for, for this course, which has probably led you to this course. But also look at the wider recruitment pages the university has. So things talking about accommodation, for example, talking about additional pots of money to help you in terms of scholarships. You know, those things might be helpful, useful. So do check those out. And um, you can probably talk to a student ambassador, student advisor to get a sense of what student life is like here at the University of Brighton. And just, yeah, just a reminder of that web page, our um, subject area and my email address. So if you've got any sort of gritty, detailed questions about the course, just send me an email. If you've got any general areas uh, of, of, of query um, about that course or indeed about the admissions process, just send an email to Paul Teverson. He's the admissions tutor for the programme. Um, and I am going to wrap up now, but uh, I just want to wish you well in your application and um, wish you good luck in your interview. And if you do get off of the place, it means uh, you've done very well and we'd really like to have you um, come study with us here at Brighton. Okay.